please. Has the UK become a terrorist target because of its culture or because of the actions of its government abroad? Douglas Murray. Well, hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we have another video before us today titled School Question Time. Wow. I'm seeing a lot of names here. I believe uh, these are the panelists. Uh, Ed Milband, Douglas Murray, Saida Wasi, Davina MCCom. Wow. I believe this is going to be an interesting one. As we all know, Douglas Murray always say the truth. So let's see how this goes. Go. With us tonight, Ed Miliband, promoted to the cabinet last week as cabinet office minister at 37, one of its youngest members. The broadcaster and big brother host, Davina McCall. Saida, soon to be Baroness Vasi, appointed this week to the shadow cabinet, responsible for social cohesion. Douglas Murray, the neoconservative author. And Charlie Bell, winner of our nationwide search for a young panelist. Welcome, welcome to this very special edition of Question Time from London, uh, the school's Question Time, co-produced by students who won the school's Question Time challenge. They've been working with our producers here over the past few weeks to put together the program. Uh, for the second time running, they decided to look for a member of the public to have a seat on the panel, something we're often asked to do. We had a national competition, we had auditions, and the winner of the seat was Charlie Bell, 18 years old, on his way to study medicine at Cambridge University. The students also had a big input into the makeup of this panel, which is why, as you'll see, I'm the only one with white hair. <laughs> they, um, they also decided the audience tonight would be between 14 and 22, which I suppose is the Big Brother audience, Davina, pretty much. If you want to comment during the programme, as always, you can do it. Uh, a text to 83981, CFAX page 155, if you select that, will tell you what others are saying. You can email us at our website, of course. Our first question tonight. Tom Johnson, please. Has the UK become a terrorist target because of its culture or because of the actions of its government abroad? Douglas Murray. Well, um, I'd first of all say absolutely not to do with our actions abroad, but put that in with one rider. If it were the case that because of our foreign policy, people think they have the right to blow up people going to nightclubs and to blow up those fleeing from the first blast, as seems to be the case, then I'd say you have a choice in front of you, much like the choice we had a few weeks ago over whether or not Britain and the British state has the right to decide who gets knighthoods or whether crowds in Pakistan who burn books they can't read have that right. And we have the same choice now which is whether or not British foreign policy will be run by the British government in the interests of the British state, which I think is the case, or whether or not we just allow other people who let off bombs here or in Baghdad or anyone else who want to terrorise us, whether we allow them to run our foreign policy. That's the choice before us. So what's your answer to the question? The cause the of the terror? The answer is that the cause of the terror is Islamist fundamentalism which is a version of Islam, a politicized version of Islam, which is wreaking havoc across the globe and has been doing so for many years, and which was aiming to uh, attack this country and our allies before the invasion of Iraq, before the invasion of Afghanistan, and indeed even before 9-11. That is the truth. Saeed <laughs> I think that uh, there can never be any justification for the use of violence against civilians, and I think we need to make that point very clear, and I'm sure all of you in this room would agree with me on that. But uh, there are two separate issues that you asked. Um, is the culture issue that you raised, uh, I think there is a concern about culture in this country. I think there is a concern about what it means uh, for us to be uh, a British people today and whether we're comfortable about our identities. And certainly my role as uh, Minister for Community Cohesion, I will be looking at ways in which we as British people have ease within each other rather than feeling uncomfortable, which I understand that most, some communities are. 
In terms of uh, foreign policy, I think it's quite right for us to raise legitimate concerns about our foreign policy, but I don't think it's right to make that link then to say, well, because of that, people have the right to come and wreak violence in our country. But hang on, nobody was, uh, you promoted yourself to minister. I think you meant shadow minister. Shadow minister. minister. Yes, <laughs> not quite there yet, no. A little way to go. But, um, but, but uh, the question was whether we're a target because of the actions of the government, not whether that legitimises terrorism. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right, Tom Johnson? Where's Tom Johnson? Yes. Uh, yeah, and, and I'd say to Douglas, I mean, I agree, fundamentalism is bad. I think, I think we're pretty much all agreed on that. Uh, but you didn't, you didn't really answer the question of why fundamentalists turn on this country specifically because as a target. Because they hate this country and they hate our allies and they hate the West. Well, and if you, don't, if you don't believe me, listen, at least do them the decency of listening to what they say themselves. Read the Hamas Charter. Read what Mr. Bin Laden says. Read what the Muslim Brotherhood would do in this country. Read it and believe okay. them. D Davina McCall. Davina McCall. Hold on. We'll come to you in a moment. Davina. Well, as a sort of non-political person, I would have to say that I feel that that's twaddle, because actually... <laughs> I, uh, I haven't read the Hamas Charter, and I wouldn't imagine many people here have, but it does seem that hate breeds hate. And um, our foreign policy has been to go into countries that aren't waging war with us and go and completely oh. nightly. Oh, and, and Afghanistan? Yes. No, but Afghanistan itself as a country did not wage war with us. No, it allowed terrorists to breed that, no, as did Mr. Hussein. No, but that's not waging war with us. That's something terrorists completely breed, different. They, 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 no, I'm sorry. They train. <laughs> they train. A state, which, a state which allows training camps, which, from which training camps they come and attack us in our cities, in London, New York and Washington, how'd, that how'd matters. You, how would you feel about diplomacy? Or is that a swear word in your book? <laughs> okay. Wouldn't it be better, rather than just going and sort of bombing everybody, and, we and our foreign we policy, the bomb our foreign the jihadists, policy being McCall. a complete laughing stock? Well, there, there is jihad as well, but surely it's hate breeding hate. Okay. And at some point, somebody's got to turn around and say, come on, let's all sit and say, the, the, right, the woman in green there. I think we have to look at the issue of where does fundamentalism come from. I mean, throughout history, it's always been shown that where, wherever there's poverty, and um, basically we've waded into Iraq and Afghanistan and desecrated their homeland and ruined their lives. So no wonder they're turning to these options because we've taken away their livelihoods. Oh, so you think it's the war? Absolutely. All right, Charlie, Charlie, I, I have to admit. I have to admit, I'm, I'm amazed that this hadn't already come up on the panel. I'm, the, the problem with fundamentalism is not simply some people wanting to hurt us because that's the way they're made. I think we are in some way responsible for the way that these people are acting. The culture of this country is a great culture. Yeah. But we are going across to other nations and we are portraying ourselves as America's sort of very weird ally. And we're, <laughs> we're, but we're going in there and trying to promote our way of freedom, which isn't what they agree with, and we're promoting it in such a vile way that they are looking back and saying, this Why isn't what we want. want Why would we yeah. want to have a democratic state like this? We've got to give people options, and we've got to look at the causes of the fundamentalism, not just go, oh, they're breeding in Afghanistan. All right. He's making that part. Right. Making that part. <laughs> okay. Ed, Ed Miliband, we're promoting our freedom in a way that, in effect, uh, stirs up terrorism against this country. I don't agree with that, David. Look, I find it very hard to get into the minds of people who would willingly blow up a whole set of people at Glasgow Airport and at a nightclub uh, in London. And when you read about what the leaders of Al-Qaeda stand for, it is an extremist ideology, which it's not about Western values. It's a whole set of values of freedom and tolerance and liberty that they're against. Now, having said that, it is the case that they use conflicts like in Iraq, uh, like the situation in the Middle East, to, to recruit people to their cause. Now, what's the duty on us, the, the British government? It seems to me the duty on us is to say this is not a clash of civilizations. This is not about different faiths against each other or different races against each other or different religions against each other. It is about saying that we care about people around the world and the, and the fairness and justice around the world, whether in the Middle East or elsewhere. And that, and, and that means that we must step up our efforts on diplomacy in the Middle East and elsewhere. But because we need, in order to win people's hearts and minds, I think, we need to show that we stand for a set of values that all reasonable people yes. can you, unite but, behind. But, but do you agree, to come to the nub of the question, do you agree with the um, uh, Joint Intelligence Committee that the conflict in Iraq exacerbated the threat from international terrorism and reinforced, I quote them, the determination of terrorists 
to attack the West. Yes. Are they saying that's in Iraq? Yes. Well, look, there's no Do you agree with that? Well, yeah, there is no question that in Iraq itself, uh, lots of terrorists are now there, and there are sectarian conflicts uh, in Iraq, uh, and that is posing a threat to British but troops. Sorry, the by the conflicts in Iraq, we must mean the invasion of Iraq by the Americans and the British forces, mustn't well, we? Well, Iraq has become a centre of terrorism and, and a centre of conflict. As a result of that action, do you think? Well, not as a result of the action, it's but... centre of that before. <laughs> but it... no, no, no. Look, it, has, it has become a place where there is a big war on, on terrorism being waged. Now, the question for us, I think, is we've established a set of obligations to the Iraqi people by being there. Now, you could say, well, let's just get out immediately. I don't think that would be the right thing to do, personally, but because I think ha having gone in there uh, and being there now at the behest of the Iraqi government, we have a set of obligations we have to right, fulfill to them. That, that isn't quite the question. The question was about causation, not about what you do now. The person in white there, the man in the white T-shirt, you, sir. Yes. Right away. Hi. Well, well, surely it's a bit of both. I mean, without a doubt, Iraq and Afghanistan have exacerbated the problem, but 9-11 happened before any of it. Quite. There was obviously hatred and, and resentment against Western civilization um, before uh, Iraq or Afghanistan. Look at the embassy bombings in Africa. There, there were the terrorist attacks happened before. Were there attacks a case on Britain both. before? There. No, there weren't. But if you want to look, if you, if, if you say that we're so closely tied up with America, then surely, then surely kind of our, our policies and theirs but it works together. OK, the, the woman at the back there, on the, uh, on the, on the two, two away from the gangway, you, yes. Do you yes. think withdrawing troops from um, wherever, all around the world now, is going to resolve anything at the moment if you just bring them back out? Do you not think the damage has already been done? Do you not think that if we are going to withdraw them, then we should have withdrawn them before we started? Do you, uh, do you think they should now be withdrawn? Is that your no, view? No, I don't, I, I don't know exactly what to do. I think... If we take everyone out now, then it's just going to kick off again. But if we don't, then what are we going to okay. get ourselves uh, into? The man in the second row here, you, sir. Yep. Um, are British troops in Iraq there for military reasons? Because there's only 5,000 of them, and I don't think they can fight against 100,000 or 150,000 Mahdi army people. I don't think they're there for military reasons. Okay. I don't think that, that, that was my then, Charlie. Well, first of all, we're there for as long as the Iraqi government wants us to be there, which is until the area, <laughs> the, the area that they're in is secure. And I think we have to abide by that obligation. Uh, two things. First of all, uh, Ms. McCall referred to that not having read the Hamas Charter. If you are going to comment on this, you could at least do the people who desire to kill you the decency of trusting their word. And I can tell you that if the people who are, who well, are attempting, the the people who are adom uh, attempting to bomb London and Glasgow and are currently wreaking havoc in Baghdad and across the world. Um, if they had their way, I can assure you your own career wouldn't be going the way it is. You wouldn't be the woman you are. You wouldn't be allowed to do what you do in this country. That is the same, and that is the same for everyone in this room. And you should not be, and you should not take that for granted. And one other thing, I should just add to that. There's been a lot of cynicism in this room about this already tonight. But our troops in Iraq did not only go into Iraq for one reason. The people of Iraq had been living under a totalitarian dictatorship for decades, and many people thought that that was our fault. We get blamed when we intervene and when we don't. Right. It was the same so in the Balkans. We get blamed when we All intervene right. and when we don't. Right. If you... Davina McCall. Um, I agree that um, there was a dictatorship in Iraq before we went in, but this dictator, although he was an extremely bad man, did seem to hold the country together in oh. some way. That Now that we've gone oh. in, oh. there is complete civil war in the country. But the question is and about terrorism in Britain yes, and, whether, and, the cause, and the cause of the cause it. The cause was our foreign, that it has been exacerbated by our foreign policy. And what we need now is a quick withdrawal from Iraq to settle it down, quickly withdraw, and I would like a public inquiry, please. Oh. I think I have to take issue with a lot of what, uh, what Douglas has to say because we can look at the cause of it or we can actually say this is a problem that we have here right now like, um, like Ed has said and how are we going to move forward and I think the use of the language that you use Douglas actually makes it worse okay. and it makes communities in this country it makes, it makes communities in this country feel as if somehow they are outside the big tent of Britain and that creates more resentment which creates bad community cohesion which means we will never win the hearts and minds to defeat terrorism. Were you opposed to the war? Yes, I was. You are, and, and, and remain. I mean, you, you, you still feel it was a mistake. My, my views about the war are very, very clear, and I think it was a mistake. Right. And you agree that attacks on our troops are absolutely reprehensible? No, and, I don't. And, Douglas, you know, you kind of, you kind of Ed, make these not. links. Ed Miliband. Do you, you, do you, do you, do you Ed Miliband, Devine McCall says there should be an inquiry 
inquiry into why the war happened? Do you think there should be an inquiry? I think there will come a time when we need to find a way of learning lessons, not in my view when the troops are still there, because I think the concentration has to be on the, on the work the troops are okay. doing to actually train the Iraqi army to the gentleman who asked the question uh, in order that they can uh, patrol yes. uh, Iraq as best they can. Okay, I'll take one more point here and move on to another question. You say yes, with the spectacles. How do you expect to, um, the, to win the hearts and minds of the Iraqi people and people across the world when it's come out today that uh, one of the main reasons Australia went to war in Iraq was for oil? You know, that hasn't come out today, sir. The war was not about oil. If it were, we wouldn't have spent all these billions of dollars in lives and blood and treasure. It was not done for oil. We okay. could have got oil by doing a deal with Saddam like Mr. Chirac did. Okay, let's move on. Right. Wow. What an interesting debate. You can tell this was really heated. Wow. And just from the question asked, as UK uh, become a terrorist target because of its culture or because of uh, its government policy abroad. And I think Douglas Murray gave uh, a good answer that uh, one of the reasons uh, is uh, Islamist uh, fundamentalists. Uh, as we all know, Douglas Murray always talk about uh, uh, Islamist uh, extremism. You know, UK as a country has its own identity and UK's identity is um, um, UK's identity, the British identity is embodied uh, in their culture, is embodied in their tradition, is embodied in their values. So I believe everyone coming to uh, reside uh, in UK or uh, coming to reside in UK as his own culture, as their own culture, as their own tradition, as their own value, values. But you come in to reside in UK, you have to be able to adjust yourself to, uh, uh, to accept UK's culture, to accept UK value, to accept UK tradition. You don't have to uh, come to a country and try to uh, impose your own uh, tradition, your own values, your own culture on the people. I think that is totally wrong. And that's what uh, Douglas Murray always talk about. He talk about uh, Islamic extremism. He talk about uh, mass immigration. He talk about Islamic fundamentalists. This point, uh, Douglas Murray always talk about every time is always uh, about UK's identity, British identity. British UK has its own identity. And its identity is rooted uh, in its culture, it's rooted in its tradition, it's rooted in its value. You coming to uh, live in the UK or coming to British with your own imported culture, with your own imported values, with your own imported tradition, and trying to impose your culture, your tradition on uh, the people of UK, I believe that is totally unacceptable. You, in order for you to be able to integrate in UK or in any other country that is not your country, the first thing you have to do is to accept the people's culture, is to accept the people's tradition, is to accept the people's value. You don't have to come with your own culture and you try to impose uh, your culture on the people. I believe that is totally wrong. I understand that there might be some culture uh, in UK that is not suitable that is not suitable for, for the immigrant, that is not suitable for uh, the people coming to or reside in UK. There might be some culture, the UK's culture, that is not suitable to them. But it's up to them to accept the culture. It's up to them to accept the tradition. It's up to them to accept the values, the norms, because they are coming to uh, uh, reside in UK. If they can't accept the culture, they can't accept the tradition, they can't accept UK's value, I think they rather go back to their own country where they can live freely, where no one is going to question their uh, where no one is going to question their action. You know, UK as a country always promote uh, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and a lot of those uh, Islamic extremism, uh, uh, Islamic fundamentalists, they tend to be offended. Uh, they tend to be offended. Uh, when someone says something and uh, they take it as a hate speech or they take it as an offense against their religion, against their belief. And I believe that is totally wrong. UK as a country, uh, 
UK as a country is a Christian country. So you come in as a Muslim to live uh, in a Christian country, to live in UK and deciding to uh, impose your, your culture on the people or decide to take offense or when the people try to express their freedom of speech or freedom of expression, uh, they tend to call it an hate speech or uh, they tend to say uh, the person is becoming Islamophobic only because the person is trying to express his freedom, the person is trying to express his freedom of speech, the person is trying to express his freedom of expression. This is what Douglas Murray have to talk, I always talk about, that you live in a country, you live in a society, uh, there is no way you won't be offended. There's no way you won't be offended because uh, I also, of course, I always believe that uh, if a society uh, is to flourish, there has to be a clash of different ideas and the clash of different ideas bring a better solution to, to a lot of problems. So you can come from uh, elsewhere and come to uh, impose your culture on the people. Uh, you know, UK uh, is a country that always talk about freedom of speech, freedom of expression. And, you know, there are certain things that are allowed in UK that, are not, uh, that, that, that might not be allowed uh, in the country where, uh, where you are from. But it's up to you to accept that because... You are in UK, so you have to abide by UK culture, by UK tradition, by UK values. I believe that is what Douglas Murray is trying to, or that is the point Douglas Murray is trying to uh, make the students understand that is that the main problem, the major problem is Islamist fundamentalists, uh, Islamist extremism, that a lot of them, uh, they do all the things because they hate UK, they hate UK culture. And from the point Douglas Murray has given that you have to believe what these people are saying. If they are, if they say they are going to kill you, they are going to uh, release a missile, they are going to uh, bombast you, it's up to you to accept that. You have to take them by their word. You don't have to say, oh, they are, you don't have to uh, try to feel sympathy and say, uh, they, don't, they, don't, they don't mean what they said. They, they don't mean what they said. Someone is telling you that it's going to, it's going to shoot you. It's pointing a rifle at you and you are saying uh, the person is joking. The next minute you know the person is going to release, uh, re, re, uh, the person is going to, is going to shoot. And when the person shoots, the next minute you'll be dead. So if, some, if somebody is telling you it's going to kill you, it's going to release a missile, it's going to bombast you, you have to believe what the person is saying. You have to believe what the person is saying. You don't have to wait until the person executes execute what the person is saying before you believe the person because that is going to lead to a loss of life and loss of property. So you have to take someone by his word. If they are telling you they are going to release a missile, they are going to shoot, they are going to perform all sort of crime, you have to take them by their word. You don't have to wait uh, until... Uh, until they execute what they what, what they are saying they, they will do before you before you believe them. That's what Douglas Murray is trying to address uh, in this video. It's not afraid. It's not afraid to say the truth. And about UK uh, government policy abroad, talk about uh, Iraq, Iran, the Afghanistan. Uh, I believe UK sending their troops uh, to this country is to help maintain peace. Is to help maintain peace. And I believe UK sending their troops to these countries. They are not trying to impose their culture. They are not trying to impose their values. They are not trying to impose their policy on these countries. They are only trying to uh, uh, maintain peace and help them uh, uh, to stabilize the country in order to be able to maintain peace. So I think at a point, someone has to, someone has to uh, step in as a, as a mediator to be able to, uh, uh, to be able to make the country to be a peaceful country, to be able to stabilize the, con uh, the conflict going in the country. Because sometimes if UK, uh, let me say, if UK decide to withdraw their troops uh, in this country, uh, I believe uh, they, are going to, they are going to end up, you know, killing themselves. So UK is coming as a mediator, is coming as someone to help this country uh, to stabilize peace. So I believe uh, UK is not is not a terrorist target because of its government policy abroad or because of its government uh, influence abroad. I believe each country has the right to uh, uh, determine their own policy, has the right to determine their own law. UK going to other countries is to maintain peace. 
is to maintain peace. They are not going. They are not going to this country. They are not going to Iran to impose their policy in the, uh, on the people of Iran. They are only going to Iran to uh, to support the government in order to be able to stabilize peace. And for those terrorists coming to UK to cause harm, to cause harm to the people, I believe uh, uh, that is their own problem. That is their own problem. Is because uh, they don't see, they don't think to accept uh, the value, the culture, the norms, and the tradition of UK. It's up to them to accept uh, UK's culture. Because you come in to live in a country, you have to be able to adjust yourself to accept the people culture. You don't have to come into a country with your own imported value and culture, and you try to impose it on the people. If you know you can accept uh, the culture, the tradition, the values of the country you are residing. I think it's better you go back to your own country where no one is going to question your action. Wow. You can tell this was really an interesting debate. It was really heated and I've learned a lot from this. So I would also like to hear your uh, opinion. Do you think UK has become a terrorist target because of its culture or because of its government policy abroad? Keep the comments coming. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day.